All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to our session today. Um, we would love to get to know you a little bit better before we formally start at 4.30. So if you would like, please drop in the chat your hometown where you're tuning in from today. Um, for anyone who would need closed captions, you do have the option to put on closed captions down below. Um, and you're welcome to use the Q&A box at any time to ask questions. As a reminder in the Q&A box, um, that's where we'd like the questions. Please do not put them in the chat or else it will not be answered. All right, hello everyone, welcome, welcome. Ooh, California, I hope it's warm there right now. Um, it is also warm in Minnesota, which you uh, may or may not expect. All right, welcome everyone. Um, for anyone who just jumped in, feel free to drop into the chat where you're tuning in from here today before we formally start our programming at 4.30. All right, hello, welcome. Texas, okay, nice. I have some family in Dallas, so I'm not sure if that's where you are in Texas, but oh. Ooh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, nice. Also, as a reminder for anyone who needs closed captions, you're welcome to turn them on. They're just linked at the bottom um, for you. And then also for questions, please make sure to put your questions in the Q&A. If you put them in the chat, unfortunately, we will not be able to answer them. Welcome everyone. We will be starting in just a bit. Um, my apologies. All right, welcome everyone. We will be starting in just a minute, but for anyone who has joined, please feel free to put into the chat where you'll be tuning in from today. Uh, as a reminder, once more, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A function. Ooh, New Jersey. I think this is the first New Jersey friend I'm seeing. Florida, very fun couple Minnesota friends, um, seeing Wisconsin, Chicago, Denver. Okay. Wow, Louisiana, that is wild. All right. Great. So I know a few more folks are jumping in, but we have a pretty packed program today. So I do want to make sure that we're starting on time. So um, for anyone who is unfamiliar with me, my name is Lynn. I am the freshman admissions counselor for the College of Biological Sciences. And thank you so much for tuning in today for our virtual uh, CBS experience. We're so excited to show you over the next hour an overview and highlights of our college. So to kick off our programming, I do want to start with a welcome from our Dean. So for a little bit of a bio, um, our Dean is Sarah J. DeWalt, who became Dean of the College of Biological Sciences in 2023. She was a member of Clemson University faculty for near, nearly two decades before joining the college. During that time, she served in a number of leadership and service roles, including as the Chair of Biological Sciences. A plant ecologist, Dr. DeWalt's research is globally recognized and cuts across multiple biological sciences disciplines, including ecological and molecular genetic techniques to address a number of questions in population, evolutionary, and community ecology. 
Among her contributions to her field, she served as the president of the Association for Tropical Biology and Conservation. Dr. DeWalt received her PhD in the biological sciences from Louisiana State University. And while I could go on and on, I'm sure folks in the room are more excited to hear directly from Dean DeWalt, so I will pass it over to you. Great, thank you, Lynn. And thank you all for being here today. Um, as Lynn said, I'm Sara DeWalt, Dean of the College of Biological Sciences. And I'm pleased to be here with you today and look forward to sharing some of the many things that make this college and the University of Minnesota an ideal place to study biology. But first, I wanted to say congratulations to you all. You made it. Admission to this college is really competitive, and you've worked hard and distinguished yourself. So well done. And the fact that you applied to CBS, and that's our shorthand for the College of Biological Sciences, means that you're already very interested in biology, which is great because this is an incredibly exciting time to study the biological sciences. We're gaining new insights every day and our ability to use biology to improve human health and, and address environmental issues has never been greater than it is right now. As new technologies like the CRISPR gene editing tool proliferate, we're in an unprecedented position as biologists to play a central role in addressing a wide range of problems and really lead the way in creating a better world for all. And as a student in CBS, you will have the chance to play an active role in this unfolding story. So one of the reasons why CBS is truly a great place to study biology is that uh, this college is focused on the biological sciences and you can pro and we provide opportunities that you really will not find elsewhere. You can choose from eight majors and more than a dozen minors designed to provide you with opportunities to dive into the areas that interest you most. And we change with the needs and interests of our students. In fact, we just introduced a biotechnology minor this past fall that will prepare those looking to work in the biotech industry after graduation. You can also complement your coursework in CBS by studying nearly anything else here at the U of M, and many of our students do. So you could combine your neuroscience major with a minor in psychology or a major in genetic cell biology and development with a minor in business management. And many of our students across our majors also pair studies in the different languages that the university offers. You'll hear a lot more about our majors and minors from, um, from our freshman admissions counselor, Lynn, who, um, who you've met and later in this program. So our location uh, in, the heart in, of, in the heart of a major metropolitan area means that you will also be able to take advantage of all that the Twin Cities offers, including opportunities to volunteer and to intern at Fortune 500 companies, nonprofits, and other organizations. The U of M is one of the few research universities with the full breadth of disciplines, as well as professional schools, including medical school, dental school, veterinary medicine, business, and law, which means that you can explore all of those interests in all of those areas seamlessly. And what does that mean for you? It means that the resources and opportunities available to you here are nearly unparalleled. And as you dig into the world of discovery in biology here in CBS, we also know how important it is to build community. Building relationships with peers and faculty is critical to your success as a student. Uh, we say the U of M is a big place, but as part of the CBS community, you'll always have the support you need close at hand. We've created several programs that encourage connections and engagement including our one-of-a-kind Nature of Life, or NOL program. The Nature of Life actually starts the summer before you even arrive on campus, and it starts at our Itasca Biological Station in the heart of Itasca State Park in Northwest Minnesota. Uh, you might know that the Mississippi River starts at Itasca, so that's where the headwaters of the Mississippi are, and it's an incredible place to start your own collegiate journey as well. At Nature of Life, you, our incoming students, spend a few days at Itasca with a group of other incoming first-year CBS students. And our faculty also go, so you'll get to meet faculty, including me. I'll be there for a few of the sessions this summer. You'll also get to connect with peers and participate in hands-on biology lessons that take you across the headwaters 
um, into bogs, into forests, and out onto Lake Itasca. And don't worry if you're not outdoorsy, there are hot showers, home-cooked meals, no tent, no backpack required. And um, it's one of the, the things that most drew me here to the University of Minnesota and CBS. Graduating seniors often cite their time at Itasca as one of their most memorable and important experiences that they take away from their undergraduate years. And one of the students you'll see later in these slides told me that he is good friends with several of the people that he first met four years ago at Itasca. And the faculty told me how much they look forward to meeting you this summer. So back on campus, that sense of community continues to take shape through the, the shared experience of our introductory biology courses. We call them foundations of biology. And also the CVS guilds, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But in our two semesters of Foundations of Biology, we challenge students to put their biological knowledge to work to solve real world problems. In CBS, we are constantly innovating how we teach biology and embrace evidence-based approaches to teaching and learning. In fact, we have a department called Biology Teaching and Learning with expert faculty who study how to teach biology most effectively. And you'll be taught by these award-winning faculty. And then I mentioned earlier that students also belong to CBS guilds. These are smaller groups of around 70 fellow CBS incoming first-year students, and they're gonna help you build a community within a community. Each of our guilds also has a sophomore peer mentor, and you'll start to meet some of um, those guild members and mentors at Nature of Life at Itasca. The learning by doing ethos in Foundations of Biology includes designing and executing your own experiments in our new teaching lab rooms. And these lab rooms are so beautiful. It's a space specifically designed to empower students to drive inquiry and, en and encourage collaboration. We have teaching assistants called TAs that are gonna help you along the way. And you actually will have an opportunity to serve as a TA in your later years in CBS. But your research experience definitely does not end in those foundations of biology labs. You'll have a lot of opportunities to engage in research and inquiry through your upper division courses, other lab courses, and uh, alongside graduate students, postdocs, and faculty in the research labs. As a student at a top research university, the um, University of Minnesota, you will learn from instructors who are actually driving discovery in their fields. For example, Professor Perry Hackett in our Department of Genetic Cell Biology and Development developed a gene transfer platform that reprograms the human immune system to attack and kill cancer. The technology that he developed was then bought by Merck Pharmaceuticals for a billion dollars. And guess what? His research involved undergraduates working in his lab. We also have some of the world's experts on lions, on biodiversity, on plant genetics, on microbial engineering to clean our waters and land, and so much more. Many of our faculty are involved in biotech startup companies, and they are e eager to share their experiences with you. I hear so often from our CBS faculty that one of the joys of working here is the strength and curiosity of our undergraduate students. So I really hope you decide to come and join this vibrant CBS community. And we provide every opportunity we can to make research experiences available and accessible to all, because research teaches you not only how to gather evidence and evaluate it, but also how to frame questions, how to develop testable hypotheses, and how to think critically. My Dean's Research Program even provides paid research opportunities. And we know that research and learning don't just happen in classrooms and labs. You would also have opportunities to do research and take classes at our field stations and in our plant conservatory. Our two field stations are the Itasca Biological Station, which I already mentioned, where NOL starts, and the Cedar Creek Ecosystem Science Reserve, which is just 40 minutes north of the Twin Cities. Uh, Cedar Creek is a world famous site for long term research on biodiversity. And one of my favorite spots, which is near my office on the St. Paul campus, is the CBS Conservatory and Botanical Collection, which is home to more than 1,600 plant species, which some of them are quite rare from around the world. And you can go there, like I do, to soak up the beauty of plants, even in the dead of winter. 
As I mentioned, we're always striving to create a sense of community within CVS. And another way students engage with other students is through student leadership and clubs. There are about 30 student groups related to biology alone here, including a number of major specific uh, groups and professional interest groups, such as the pre-health club. You also gain leadership experience. One opportunity within the college is participation on the CVS student board with whom I meet regularly. You can engage with the broader community as well through volunteering. You can even start your own program like Chino Wakama, pictured here in the center of, this pic of, of the picture on this, your screen. He launched a program that connects undergraduate students with elementary school students. Chino is now a MD, PhD student at the School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York City. As a student of biology, the world truly is your classroom. Faculty in CBS offer a number of short biology-themed learning abroad experiences in Sweden, in Ireland, and elsewhere. Or you can spend more time abroad through a semester program. I myself studied abroad in Ecuador on an ecology course and found it a really rewarding semester. You can study topics like marine biology in the Turks and Caicos, uh, coastal ecosystems in Sicily, cancer biology in South Korea. Regardless of the program that you want to pursue, the university wants to make learning abroad affordable to all students. And so there are a number of scholarships available for studying abroad. And a number of these programs cost students the same as they would pay for a semester here in the Twin Cities. So no matter how you choose to engage as a student in CBS, you will have the support you need to be successful every step of the way. We assign each student an academic advisor who's gonna help you navigate which courses to take and when. Our career coaching team specializes in helping you find pathways for the life and health science careers. They work one-on-one -on -one with students as well as offer workshops and opportunities to visit and connect with the many life sciences and biotech employers here in the Twin Cities. In fact, I went with one of our career advisors and a group of about 20 students back in November to a biotech company that's just two minutes away from our East Bank campus. Our team of academic and career advisors build relationships with students. They'll get to know you as a person and the identities you hold, and they're gonna help you thrive in CBS at the U and beyond. So whatever your goal, a degree from CBS is gonna prepare you to hit the ground running. You'll be well positioned for graduate or professional school, a career in industry or education, and so much more. Our alums, some of them pictured here, go on to do amazing things in industry, nonprofits, government, healthcare, even biotech startups. And when I look at this list of alums, I can see the diversity of pe people and career paths that our graduates take with the commonality being that they are using their critical thinking skills honed in CBS with their commitment to making the world a better place. So I hope that that gave you a useful, uh, if quick, overview of what you can look forward to if you decide to come here. Congratulations again on your admission to CBS. And I really hope to see you this summer at Itasca or this fall back in the Twin Cities. Alrighty, thank you so much, Dean DeWalt, for the warm welcome. As Dean DeWalt alluded to, while research is not a requirement for our college, it is a strong pillar. In fact, we find over 70% of our students engage in research in some type of form or way. While we unfortunately will not be able to physically bring you into a lab today, we would like to showcase what research in the lab can look like. So right after this, we'll be playing a video of Dr. Uh, Lori Parker's lab. As a distinguished researcher, Dr. Parker studies post-translational modifications, also known as PTMs, with a focus on protein phosphorylase, phosphorylation by uh, tyrosine kinases, which play key roles in disease and are particularly important in cancer. So we will be playing that right now. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming to see my lab. This is the Parker Lab at the University of Minnesota. So our lab is behind a card access door for security. There's a lot of other labs on this floor. And we're, right now we're coming into the front hallway where there's a lot of, of machines and storage where we keep all of our frozen things. And here on the left, 
is my lab space. So in this area, we've got our refrigerator, we've got a lot of our PPE storage and solvent storage. We also keep our chemicals here and a lot of our different kinds of glassware and tubes. As we go here into the lab space area, down here, these are what the research space bays look like. So each person in my lab has a, an area where they have a desk and then a working surface where they can do their experiments and, and set up their equipment to do the things they need to do. So along here, we have different, different people will work together in these little bay areas. So at this end, I've got some machinery, HPLCs. We've also got some uh, areas where we can weigh out chemicals and where we have a lyophilizer, that's a freeze dryer that we use for our research for handling the peptides that we make. Um, and here on the right, this is our peptide synthesis factory room. So um, the machine up on the right that says protein, that is a peptide synthesizer. And then on the left is our LCMS that we use to analyze the peptides. So over here on the synthesizer, we've got software that will help us. We can program in whatever sequence we want this to make and set it up so that those, those re, uh, vessels across the top row, those are the reaction vessels. And we put the resin for synthesizing peptides in there. And then down here, we put all the bottles attached to these tubes that will then deliver the amino acids that we're coupling on to build our peptides during the peptide synthesis process. Um, so with this, we can go from start to finish um, building an entire polypeptide uh, chemically by, uh, from scratch. And once we cleave it off the resin, we need to analyze it to identify whether it actually turned out the way we wanted it to or not. So um, we use a machine, this LCMS here, we can put the peptide in some buffer and a sample vial here that gets pulled in with a needle into the system where it gets separated out and then analyzed to determine its molecular identity. So in some of our other work, we, um, we do a lot of molecular biology and biochemistry type experiments. So here are some pipetters and some, some heat blocks, some sort of basic uh, centrifuge, like basic lab uh, tools that we have around our lab for doing lots of kinds of experiments. Um, and each person in my lab has a little station that has usually their own pipetters because it's, it's good to have your own tools for things like that. Um, another kind of work we do involves 96 well plates, so doing a sort of a high throughput experiment, that's what we call it. So here's a plate and you can see that each of these little circles, the little wells there has some liquid in it. Each of those would be a different condition in an experiment. We line them all up together, we, we run the experiment, and then we can analyze it using this plate reader. This is, uh, can read the, the color or the fluorescence of the materials that are in those wells. And those then come out like this, so we get the, the values for how, how much uh, signal was in each one of the wells, and then we can use that information to interpret what happened in our experiment. So in this example, it would be increasing amounts of signal from left to right in the wells that are associated with those particular blocks. And um, that's the kind of thing we do to, to measure whether kinase enzymes are active or not, because we get more signal when they're active and less signal when they're not. So we also have a cell culture area, and here's one of the, my lab members um, working in the, the tissue culture hood where she's, um, she's using sterile technique to transfer some material from one thing to another. Um, it's really important in these kinds of settings to make sure that you are protected from the material you're working with and it's protected from you so you don't contaminate it. Um, we also in this space have our, all of our a special fridge to keep all of the things we use um, in that tissue culture hood. And then we have the, the cryo storage where things like our cell lines are frozen down in liquid nitrogen to keep them stable and safe until we're ready to use them. All right, so thanks for coming to visit my lab and I hope that you can come see it in person someday.
your video got you really excited and engaging in research, but just know that this is just one example of what CBS and the University of Minnesota has to offer. Now, before we get too in the weeds about discussing research, I do want to zoom a little bit back out. After all, again, research is just one part of your CBS experiment uh, experience, so let's talk about the different majors. We know that choosing your college major can feel like a big decision. And especially in CBS, you really have the opportunity to study life at every scale. All of our majors provide a really strong foundation for careers in a variety of fields, from healthcare to biotech and education to conservation. No matter what major you choose, you will get to explore the breadth and depth that there is of biology. But before we do that, I would love to just survey the room. Um, we will be making a poll live now, and I would love for you to select which majors or majors that you are currently interested in. Um, and if you're undecided, that is okay as well. The anticipation. I'm excited to see the results. Alrighty, so I can see that biology is by far our most popular with um, a lot of interest kind of spread throughout. So with that in mind, we can kind of break it down to more detail um, as it shows in the poll and also within our college, we can start with that bio biology major. Um, so biology is one, our most popular major, and it is the perfect major if you are looking to learn a little bit of everything. Biology really offers the flexibility for you to study courses across the different disciplines that are most interesting for you. For example, if you're really interested in evolution and genetics, you can con concentrate on coursework in both of these areas without having to specialize into one. Next, we have cellular and organismal physiology, which gives you the chance to learn about the functions of cells, organs, tissues, and organisms from bacteria to large animals. It incorporates concepts and approaches from physics, genetics, and biochemistry. It's also one of our most interdisciplinary majors, and students will really get a chance to learn all aspects of the tree of life before they get to specialize their interests later on. Next, we have biochemistry. So biochemistry explores the chemical processes related to living organisms, particularly lipids, proteins, and cell signaling. Um, I think a question we get a lot is, what's the difference between biochemistry and chemistry? So I would say the biggest difference is that in biochemistry, it really emphasizes the integration of chemical principles into biological processes. Next, we have microbiology, and as a microbiology student, you'll really get to explore the mostly invisible and mysterious world of microscopic organisms. You'll gain big insights by investigating tiny organisms, from developing better vaccines, to a safer food supply, to utilizing microbes to in the fight against cancer. Next, we have genetics, cell biology, and development. This is a three-part major where you'll learn about human genetics and genomics, cell structure and function, and developmental mechanisms like the formation of tissues and organs. Uh, genetic cell biology and development, uh, development majors also investigate how genes impact cancer, study genome sequences, and work to understand what happens within cells as they migrate. Next, we have neuroscience. So neuroscience is the study of the brain, but specifically the brains of complex organisms like humans. So how do we think, feel, and perceive the world around us? This major includes the study of the nervous system at a cellular, behavioral, molecular, and evolutionary levels. Um, I think a really great example of important areas of research that is happening in this field, um, we see a lot of research focused on neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Next, we have plant and microbial biology. Um, this studies the genetics, evo uh, ecology, evolution, and molecular biology of plants, fungi, and microbes. You'll be able to learn about forest ecology, field mycology, and flower plant diversity. Um, plant and microbial biology is a growing field with cutting edge research, asking questions from food scarcity, all the way to using plants to help combat disease. 
And finally, we have ecology, evolution, and behavior, which is the study of ecosystem ecology and molecular evolution. This major provides a broad foundation and gives our students a critical uh, perspective in topics as contrasting as developing vaccine strategies, understanding and mitigating our impact on the environment, and why organisms may vary in their response to novel environments. Outside of just our eight majors, we do also have 14 different minors for students to choose from. While I don't have time to go into detail into all of these, I do want to highlight a few unique ones that can really round out your educational experience. The first one I always like to talk about is marine biology, mostly because that's when I get questions a lot. Because how do you have a marine biology program if you're not by an ocean? Fun fact, we have a lot of freshwater lakes. So you'll learn a lot about freshwater marine biology, but this is um, a great minor that highlights how you compare your learning experience with study abroad. So a lot of our marine biology students will go on sessions and we brought them to places like the Bahamas, Galapagos, and so much more to get that freshwater lens. An example of a minor that maybe is more healthcare oriented is our pharmacology minor. This is actually in partnership with the pharmacy school where you'll explore the relationship between drugs and how they impact biological systems. And finally, for folks that are more interested in things leaning towards business or industry, I think two minors that really highlight that is computational biology and biotechnology. And they're great minors to explore if you're looking to develop analytical and quantitative skills. So again, I know I've thrown a lot of information at you, but I do wanna assure you that you have the flexibility to change your CBS major later on. Many of our courses are the same across the first two years. Um, as an undergraduate, and we also offer for uh, core foundations courses that will give you a chance to explore all the areas of life sciences before you have to decide um, later on. If you're also hearing all this, and you're like, whoa, I don't know if I can navigate this myself. That is completely okay. We have amazing academic advisors that can also help navigate this journey every step of the way with you. I invite you to explore our majors and minors through our website. You can see what classes that you might take there and also where our graduates have gone after graduation. The link should be put into the chat right now. So that was a lot of words for me, but now you'll have an opportunity to learn about our Nature of Life programming from the director of our program, Brittany Ike. So I'll pass it over to you, Brittany. Thanks, Lynn. Hello everyone. Um, I'm glad to be here tonight and talk with you all about Nature of Life. I am the program director. Uh, fun fact, I was a CBS 2014 graduate, so I'm hitting my 10 year reunion. And I experienced Nature of Life as a student and that was one of my key experiences. Um, I'm the only team member here tonight, but if you ever contact us with questions, you might hear from my associate directors, Alexander Kulaki and Andy Fillmore. And in some cases, when we're super busy, my senior student leaders who can help direct you. Overall, the goal of the Nature of Life program is to help our CBS undergraduate students build community, create connections, and develop the skills, self-awareness, and habits of mind that research shows contribute to the success within college and beyond. We really do rely heavily on our student mentoring and leadership model. We hire over 100 sophomores and all the way up to seniors who are excited to meet with you and talk about your first years in CBS. We also have significant support from CBS instructors, faculty, staff, and the college leadership. This means you'll meet with over 50 different instructors this summer and throughout your time at NWL. Um, a lot of us will be with us in the cabins at the lake at Itasca this summer. Um, Nature of Life is a required experience for all CBS students. For first year students, this consists of three parts. And while at Itasca, that summer experience where you'll talk with peers and instructors, we'll work through the transition into college and highlight different traditions and history within CBS and the U of M. Going on from there, part two is Biology 1805 and 1806, which is two semesters long. It's an in-person first year course where we focus on building your community and building your academic skills. You'll take Biology 1805 in your fall semester and Biology 1806 in your spring semester. Lastly, part three is Biology 1807, which is one semester. It's an online course and it's as you're working as a sophomore um, to embark on your personal and career goals. A large part of the Nature of Life program is that it responds to students' concerns and issues. It gives them a space to connect with their peers who are going through those same situations 
and also find which university resources are helpful to them at that time. We'll often use these student projects to reflect on those experiences and then share them back to support our CBS community and grow that community. You'll see the four overarching projects that you'll work with in your time in NOL. First is the Itasca Expo at your NOL at Itasca session. It's a group project describing the instructors who you visited on day two. You'll also prepare questions for the group who visits your day three instructor. This is really to help students explore different majors, departments, and research within CBS and learn that asking questions is essential in every major, every department, every field. Next, during your first year, you'll complete one project each semester. So during 1805, you'll work on the Guild Gallery project. Each group creates an exhibit that's focused on questions or issues that are relevant to that group and your first semester in CBS. Then the group will share it with their guild to showcase the concerns of the first semester student and how you all overcame them. What resources did you use and what things did you learn that year? In the spring semester, you'll participate in the Biology Saves the World project. It's a group informational interview of a researcher at the U of M. Groups will interview the researcher and you guessed it, um, you'll showcase it to your guild and to everyone else. This is one of our favorite projects within Nature of Life, and so we really do like this one. Your final project is the Progress Project. It's actually an individual project in which every student decides what goal is of most importance to them that semester. You're then placed in a small group of three to four students who have similar goals so that you can provide support and accountability to each other throughout the semester. So that's kind of a large overview. Let's talk a little bit more about NOL at Itasca. NOL at Itasca is a four-day, three-night experience at the Itasca Biological Station and Labs in northern Minnesota, as was mentioned earlier. While days one and four of this experience are primarily focused on check-in, check-out, transition to the station and the basics of the station, really on days two and three, we target community building and connections building. The photos on the slide highlight those experiences. Starting at the top left, there's scheduled time to learn about the U of M and within its history and its traditions. The topics range from how do I really get into the Gopher Way? What's the purpose of campus art? And there's actually myths associated with them um, to even what gestures are important in the Minnesota Rouser. And we'll actually practice that. Moving to the right photo, you'll spend several hours in mini classes with different CBS instructors and faculty members discussing current science topics, areas of research to the professors, and even conducting experiments on in or near the station. Shifting down to that lower right, you'll be led by a peer mentor team who are older students within the college. And not only do they know the station and work with your professors throughout the summer, but they're there to share their tips and tricks and what they wish they would have known as a first year student. Lastly, that final corner, there are unstructured times throughout all the days that you're at Itasca to enjoy and to hang out with your peers. We have both indoor and outdoor activities, loud and quiet activities for you to enjoy, and you'll have opportunities to canoe on the Lake Itasca, hopefully not tip a canoe, um, beat the resident ping pong champion, and make s'mores at campfires. On this next slide, you can see several the, several, the session dates for the summer. We highlight this because our registration is within the new student checklist. Know that the dates are filled on a first come first serve basis. And while the station is large, so we have larger groups, there are limits to our cabins, our dining hall capacity, and the instructors that we invite up for each session. We'll wait on the slide just a moment or two longer if you need to write it. It's also been added into the chat so that you can write down these dates and figure out what works best with your schedule. Okay, so shifting from the summer to talking about the fall, we've already kind of mentioned CBS guilds. After Anawala Itasca, all CBS students are grouped into what we like to call CBS guilds. We're looking between 70 and 75 students who you'll meet with throughout the fall semester and then again in the spring. Each guild has a guild captain which we also call CBS Academic Advisors, um, and a junior guild leader that are associated with them. So you have sophomores within the college, juniors, and your academic advisors who are reaching out to you each week. 
Each guild is given an inspiration. They're from past faculty members within CBS or the University of Minnesota who contributed significantly to their field and the development of science research. Each guild inspiration has been given a color and an icon that are symbolic to their research and to their scientific work. Science is iterative. We stand on the shoulders of people who did the work before us. So guilds are one way that we honor your scientific predecessors. Within your guilds, students are further sorted into small groups of nine to 10 students and one sophomore guild leader. That's your home base each week during the semester. These are the students you'll see every week. You'll talk about your highs and your lows, ask questions and share concerns of your first year. So now we've discussed the format and some of the projects that you'll look at in your first year of NOL. Know that in year one of Nature of Life, students are building community within CBS and through, the, through these weekly participation in guild meetings, and you'll do small group activities. You'll make connections with several CBS sophomores and juniors, not only your one assigned one, but others as well. And through our flex weeks, which are larger weeks, we invite different campus resources in, like the U of M Writing Center, the CBS Undergraduate Research Coordinator, the Student Conflict Resolution Center, and more. And it's all timed with the different events that you're going through that semester. Through the Biology Saves the World project, you're learning about faculty research labs across the U and other science departments within CBS. Outside of these class meetings, we work to develop your academic and career skills via written reflections. We're asking you to consider what are things that you want to accomplish during your college career and what steps you need to take to achieve them. Once you work through your first year in NOL and CBS, we go into your second year. NOL year two is more about providing support and accountability to students and letting them take more of their own path to achieve these goals. This is an online class and it is one credit and you take it either your fall or spring semester of your second year. At this time, then you're now grouped by that goal that I mentioned earlier. And those goals can be different academic improvements or engagements to career exploration. Or you might um, want to engage on different campus groups, find a research lab, just explore all the different opportunities within your career, uh, career field. From the resources that we shared with you in year one to the connections that you made with your peers, we'll now work with students to actively link those experiences to further supplement your final semesters at the U. So that's actually the last pieces that I'll be talking with the Nature of Life program today. I would like to now introduce you to Nikki Latowski Schultz, the Assistant Dean for Student Affairs and International Programs, who's leading our panel discussion. Hello, everyone. I'm very excited to see you all. Um, my virtual background is actually the back, the um, view outside my office, which is this fantastic molecule just outside the molecular and cellular biology building. Though I will tell you a secret, it's art, not an actual structure, and drives some of the biochemists a little crazy in our building. Maybe even the microbiologist too, which we will introduce you in just a moment to um, our panelists. We're really excited to be able to take your questions. So please continue to add them to the Q&A, but we have a number of different panelists to help give you some different perspectives about their experiences here in the College of Biological Sciences. Um, and I'm not gonna be shy. We wanna tell you why it's the best place to study biology. Um, and so going to have our panelists introduce themselves. Um, Matthew, do you want to go first to say a little bit about yourself and why you're here? Of course. I'm Matthew. I'm in my third year here at the University of Minnesota in the College of Biological Sciences. I'm studying neuroscience, um, and I'm an out-of-state student. If that is you as well, I think that the transition here is really great, and you can find a second home. Great. Celine, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Hi, everyone. My name is Celine. I'm a sophomore here at the U um, studying genetic cell biology and development. Um, I am an in-state student and I'm also first gen. Awesome. And I'm excited for both of them to share their experiences. I've been um, doing these panel things with both of them before and know that they'll have a lot of great insight to add. 
Um, Leslie Schiff, Dr. Schiff, can you introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Leslie Schiff. I'm the director, I'm a faculty member in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology. I'm in my 33rd year at the University of Minnesota. Um, and I'm the director of undergraduate studies in microbiology. Great, and last but not least, Hussein, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do here in CVS? Hi everyone, my name is Hussein Bandy and I am the assistant director for the student advising experience in CVS Student Services. It's a lot to say. Um, and uh, I work with my colleague Liz to lead the advising team as well as do some academic advising. So some of you might be my student, and if you're not my student, then you'll be my advisor students. Awesome. Well, I want to start with my favorite question, um, which is actually about favorites. Thinking about your experiences in CBS, um, what are the what are your favorite things about being in CBS? Maybe I'll look to Matthew to go first because I think you're about to unmute. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Um, some of my favorite things about CBS are are really about what you can only find in CBS. And that begins with the faculty and courses. I have found that the faculty are some of the most supportive people um, at the university, and they teach some of the most interesting courses, um, classes where you can really get excited about going to. And you can feel like you're learning important information, stuff that will be valuable to you in your future profession, um, but also is just interesting to learn about. Uh, and then I would be remiss not to mention the great community here at CBS. Not only are you um, going to be spending a lot of time with the same people, but they have such passions for biology and those shared interests really help you form connections. Uh, but at the same time, you're at a large public university with many different uh, diverse backgrounds and people with interests and cultures that might not always align with what you came into the university with. And so it's a great opportunity to explore new things outside of biology. Great. Celine, do you want to share a little bit about your favorite things about CBS? Sure. I think just off the top of my head, one of my favorite things is accessibility to resources. Um, CBS puts out like this um, email newsletter called the Bio Brief, I think every couple of weeks. And I try my best and I do my due diligence to read through the entire thing because there's a lot of um, CBS student events, research opportunities, scholarships, just so many resources that are in that one email that gets sent out to all CBS students. And I've learned a lot about the opportunities and resources available on campus that I wouldn't have known before um, receiving that email and it's geared specifically at CBS students so it's very much biological sciences um, oriented and I think that's one of my favorite things because I'm always learning something new and I think I also really like like the pool of faculty um, the professor that I had for my foundations two course last semester he's currently teaching my genetics course so it's just nice to be able to build those relationships with professors and have a familiar faces when I go to class. Awesome. Leslie, do you want to chime in with a faculty perspective? I do. Um, I think I think the thing that I appreciate most about CDS is that the community is focused around the college. The college is the thing and, and students aren't sorted into, you know, we don't put on the sorting hat and send you into your individual you know, major that there is a real ethos around what the what the college is and what our values are, and for me, it's the students. Um, you know, I I cry at convocation, I cry at graduation, and you know, I'm teaching right now, and and I know the names of all of the students in my class, and so you know, I I think faculty really feel connected. The people like me who organize the curriculum around the majors, we all talk to each other and, and we work for the college, not for our little, um, not for our little silo. Um, so I, I just think the ethos of the college is really, um, I wouldn't have known about, I wouldn't have known it if I hadn't been experiencing it. It's a hidden gem. Uh, before I pitch over to Hussein, I did see a question in the chat that is asking about um, 
Minnesota as a great research university? And if that means that there are professors pursuing their own research or that do they also care about teaching and supporting students? And uh, most of our professors are like Leslie, that they cry at graduation, are very excited to get to work with students. Um, like Celine's experience where she had a professor in one year and then continued that relationship in another um, class. Um, just wanted to point those out and kind of answer that question on the side. Hussein. You have joined us in the last few years. What is what are your favorite things about CBS? Well, uh, this is going to echo a lot of what you've already heard, but one of my favorite things about CBS is just the students and the awesome work that they're doing. I love meeting freshmen who haven't been exposed to biology at the college level and then talking with them over the next couple of years as they start to become biologists. So it's really cool to watch that shift and the way they talk about biology, the way they're talking about research, and also how they are engaging in that community. I know Matthew said this really well of how we're a small college in this giant institution. So you get to have all of those benefits of all the resources and, and also all of the access to the really, really cool lab equipment that I think is probably really expensive. And you get all of that, but you still have that small college atmosphere where you're going to know your professors, you're going to know a lot of the people that are sitting next to you in class. So you get the advantage of the big place with the advantage of the small place all wrapped into one. Yeah, for those of you that like the physical sciences, really biology has the coolest tools moving forward in this century. Um, I know a bunch of you are interested in research, and so I'm going to look to Celine and Matthew to share a little bit about how you found your research experience, and how did you as a student feel prepared for that? Because sometimes when you enter as a first-year student, you know research is maybe something that you want to do, but you might not be sure how to go about that. Yeah, when I entered as a first-year student, I had those exact feelings. I wanted to do research while I was here at the university. Um, but part of me didn't feel prepared. I don't want to take it too fast. I wanted to kind of get immersed with uh, the college lifestyle and the expectations I was going to have before I took on that um, that journey of exploration. And so then by my sophomore year, I had decided I was really excited. I was learning all these cool ways to practice and find out more about biology. And so for me, it was just emailing a number of different researchers and faculty members on campus and hoping that they had an open spot. Uh, luckily, I did find one. It's a neuroscience lab um, that I would love to share more about if people were actually interested in the specifics. But when I started, I definitely did not feel prepared. Um, I didn't really know like how research worked at the level I was going to be conducting it at. But that's how everyone is for their first research experience. And so the faculty, um, grad students, doctoral students, whoever you might be working with are, are going to be there to help you. They're not just going to throw you in the fire. They had that same experience as you, and they want to see you continue to grow as a scientist. Celine? I think I'm definitely in the same boat as Matthew. Coming in, I was felt really nervous because, like, I guess at admissions events and just like dipping my toe into CBS, people would always talk about research. I didn't know what that me really meant, like, because research can mean a lot of different things. So I didn't really realize the full scope of what research was, like coming up with a scientific question, running experiments, data collection, until I actually got into a lab. And so similarly to Matthew, um, I just kind of researched the different um, professors and what they were doing and what their lab environments were like. And I was lucky enough to email a professor. Um, her lab is really new. I think it opened in January of last year. So she had a lot of open spots. Um, and it's a microbiology lab. And even though I'm a genetics major, I'm still learning so much. And it's so applicable because bacterial genomics is something that hadn't been on my radar before being in this lab. But um, now I'm learning a lot of things that are really applicable to my classes. And um, last, I think in the spring semester of last year, um, 
the stuff that I was learning in the research lab was directly applicable to my foundations two lab. So we were learning skills about like pipetting and just like the basics of microbiology. And from my lab and everything that I was being taught by um, the professor and the postdocs and the grad students, I came into my foundations two lab being like, oh, I already knew how to do all of this. I already knew how to do a pip like pipetting. I already knew how to like handle um, like plates and stuff and do sterile technique. So everything you learn in your classes in a lab is very much like interchangeable and what you learn in both settings comes together and strengthens your understanding. Awesome. Leslie, do you want to share a little bit from a faculty perspective, both how students get involved in research? How do you figure out who and when yeah. you take undergraduates in your lab? I want to I want to say something in response to what Celine said, and that is how transferable all of these skills and ways of thinking are. That's that's what being in a lab does. For you, it teaches you some skills and how to think like a scientist. And you can take those as you connect with passions and your passions evolve over your time here at CBS. And I'll tell you a secret, and that is that all of your faculty and graduate students and postdocs, they were like you too. You know, I remember being a, a biology student and not knowing what was going on. And so everybody starts, everybody starts there. Um, and so I think you needn't worry about the perfect fit right away. I think both Matthew and Celine talked about kind of, you know, happenstance, a fortuitous event, you know, somebody had a spot that you just get your foot in the door and, and you will have probably in CBS and if you become a card carrying scientist beyond, you will have many of those experiences. And so, you know, you just sort of need to follow the journey. You need to be persistent. Um, you need to write good emails um, and, and just, you know, keep keep at it. We've got lots of programs that help you get started. We've got courses now that are designed for sophomores to give you a taste of what this looks like. We've got classes that give you credit for it. We have funding um, both centrally and at the collegiate level. There's, there's many, many ways um, to get involved, including getting employment, getting a job, um, getting your foot in the door to wash test tubes at the beginning and just see what it's like to be in that environment. So there's, there's no end to the different ways that you can get involved. And part of the joy of being at an undergraduate institution is getting to involve undergraduates in your research. And sometimes they become authors on papers because of significant contributions. So it's, it's great. Great, thank you. Okay, Celine and Matthew, um, what is your favorite CBS class that you've taken so far and your favorite non-CBS class or class outside of CBS? I see there's a question in the chat about can, can you take fun classes like photography? Celine, why don't you lead us off? Um, I think off the top of my head, my favorite class would actually be um, the foundations of biology two lab. Um, I took that last semester and basically the entire class is um, you, you're in a group and you do a self-directed research project for the entire semester. So it builds off of the skills that you learn in foundations one and also in your foundations two lecture. Um, I really liked it because personally my group and I, we did an experiment where we measured the effects of varying levels of BPA on kind of like the cardiac output of zebrafish. So basically for a couple hours a week, I would just play around with zebrafish and run experiments. And I really liked it because um, on the St. Paul campus, we have like, I'm not really sure the exact name for it, but it's like a big lab and you have like all the materials and you basically have free reign to um, run your experiments. And so I really liked having that hands-on approach for that class. And um, there were um, like student TAs and just other support staff there to help out. So I felt like I was running my own personal research lab with my group members. 
And I think my favorite non-CBS class would be um, the campus orchestra, actually. Um, last year, I was in that because I was in orchestra in high school and I do play the violin. So it was really a great way to um, head over to West Bank into the music building and just make music. And we had two concerts per semester. So it was really nice to kind of take a break from the science aspects of my schedule and do something more creative. Right. Matthew, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that the Foundations 2 Lab is, is a great class, and I wish I could have shared my experience, but I'll, I'll give you guys something different. I thought my genetics course was one of my favorite within CBS. What you'll find is the interdisciplinary nature of all the courses you'll be taking. You can find connections everywhere. And um, for what I was doing in my research lab specifically, I didn't have the genetic background um, that really put me in a position to understand what's leading to these effects. And so being able to take that class has taught me so much about why everything else in biology happens um, because the your genetics are what build your proteins, build your cells, tissues in the organism. And so that really is, is the starting point for a lot of the other um, majors in CBS. Then outside of it, I took a uh, introductory philosophy course that was really great. It was a way for me to think critically, but not necessarily scientifically, um, which I found was a great way to keep myself stimulated, but to kind of stay outside of STEM. Um, I'm really looking forward to taking flag football next semester. I'm going to take that yet, but it's it's on my radar. That's awesome. As um, on the staff side, we love looking at what students are taking. And speaking of staff, Hussein, you work with students every day, um, both as they're choosing majors, as they're choosing classes. What advice do you have for students in CBS as they explore their schedules, what they choose to major in? Thoughts from your perspective? Yeah, I think the number one piece of advice is keep an open mind and be ready to learn. Lynn had mentioned this earlier that all eight majors in CBS, they share the same curriculum for about the first year and a half and with some creative planning, even two years. So a student could go for multiple semesters, be making path towards a degree and still not quite know what flavor of biology they want. And so I would say really be paying attention to the different topics in the foundations of biology classes and see what speaks to you. Very few people when they're coming out of high school, they think, you know what? Plants are my jam, but then as they're in foundations of biology, they realize, wow, plant and microbial biology is amazing and decide to shift and their whole career could change because they learn plants are amazing in foundations. And so do keep an open mind and talk to your advisor, because when I say that you can go two years without picking a major and not lose progress, that's with some careful planning. And so your academic advisor can help you pick that class that could count for either one that you're thinking about. So. If you can't decide, ah, do I want to do the broad biology major where I get a little bit of everything, or do I want to dive deep into neuroscience? And you can take a class that would count towards the neuroscience degree or count towards the biology degree. So then when you do make that choice, you're not losing any progress. Okay, I know we are quickly running out of time and we want to make sure to end on time as best as we can. Um, but I'm curious for both Celine and Matthew, um, thinking about what advice would you have um, for students as they look to choose a college um, at this stage? Because many of them are, are deciding what was important to you. Uh, for me, what was important is that I didn't know what my life was going to look like when I graduated after graduation or even maybe even sophomore year. And so that was one of the things that really stuck out to me about CBS is just the limitless opportunities. That way you don't have to make this decision while you're choosing your college at the same time. Uh, it gave me the opportunity to get on college, discover my passions and interests, and then pivot, transition, or continue forward. I think my piece of advice, just choosing a college is um, give yourself some grace. Like, obviously, you know, this is your first time going to college, like everything is very new. And I think you just have to take into consideration that this is your first time and you just kind of have to go with the flow, go where you're comfortable, go where you think that you'll be able to grow, if that makes sense. Like, 
put yourself in the situation where you're able to like safely and comfortably step out of your comfort zone while also discovering your passions and you know moving into the next chapter of your life and I personally chose CBS just because I thought that I would have the opportunity to grow there's so many resources and there's so many things to do so I think that this would be a good place you know if you really are open to exploring your options and dipping your toe into a little bit of everything really love that both in terms of um, working with high school students I often share that like there's both who you think you are today but also choosing a college for who you are wanting to become and sometimes those are a little different to kind of stretch yourself um, well I want to thank our panel for giving many insights I wish we had more time um, I am going to um, pass it along to Lynn who has a few things to share with you before we wrap up Just want to echo one more time. Thank you so much to our panelists for sharing your insight. But before we let you go here today, I do want to just highlight some important deadlines that are coming up. You don't have to memorize this, but I do encourage you to take a picture of the slides, or I also will be having Kirsten drop a link into the chat um, with these upcoming deadlines for our admitted students. But with that in mind, thank you so much for your time here today. Um, I'm excited to hopefully see you start as a Golden Gopher next fall. And I hope we really did give you a glimpse of the amazing things that our college has to offer. And just as a note, this is just a starting point. We do have three different in-person events called Future Gopher Admitted Day. And I hope to see you there as well. If you have any questions in the meantime, do not hesitate to reach out to me. Um, or anyone else that was on our panel here today. Congratulations again, um, and thank you so much for your time. All right, bye folks.